What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Now small disclaimer just before we get into the video, I am sick so if my voice sounds funny or different, I'm sorry, I, I really can't help it. I hate being sick, I normally never get sick so, so, so this really irritates the crap out of me. Anyways, let's get into the video. The internal combustion engine has been in development for more than a hundred years and in those years the basic idea behind it stayed the same. Yes, we have seen technologies like variable valve timing, direct injection and new ignition systems. But in today's video, we are taking a look at something insanely cool. Nissan made a new engine, which according to them will give you the best of both worlds. Great performance and great efficiency. You see these days, with the crazy high fuel prices, we all want cars that are more fuel efficient and that produces less CO2 emissions. But you see most cars that are nice and efficient have tiny little 70 horsepower, 3 piston, boring engines and these cars are really crappy to drive. Well Nissan has developed a technology which can give us both great fuel range and good performance and no it doesn't involve any electric assistance. This is the VC turbo engine. What makes this engine so special? Well this is the world's first production variable compression ratio engine. What does this mean? Well in order for me to explain why this is so cool, let me just quickly explain what the compression ratio in a car means and what it does. The compression ratio is the ratio between the maximum and minimum cylinder volume, when the piston is at the bottom and the top of its stroke respectively. Its maximum volume is when the piston is at the bottom of its stroke, the bottom dead center, where its minimum volume is the top dead center. Now for example, the BMW N54 engine, the engine in my car, has 10.2 cc of air volume at bottom dead center and 1 cc of air at top dead center. That means that the engine has a compression ratio of 10.2 to 1. Now why does this matter? Well, the higher the compression ratio is, the more energy can be extracted in the combustion cycle. High compression ratios allow the same combustion temperatures to be achieved with less fuel which means better fuel economy. So we want a car with a really high compression ratio, right? Well no, it's not all good. The higher compression leads to higher pressures. The higher pressure requires a stronger bolt engine, which means the engine will be heavier. Chances of knocking is also higher in higher compression engines, and all the components are subjected to high stresses, and if it's not designed properly, it may lead to early engine failure. Another thing is that high compression and turbos don't play together well. Forcing more air into an already highly compressed area can make an engine go kaboom. And turbos are great, making a whole lot of power with a turbo is much easier than with a naturally aspirated engine. So from a performance standpoint, we want the benefits the turbo brings. But this means under normal driving, with a turbo you would miss out on the benefits of a high compression ratio engine, because if you want to run a turbo, you need to lower the compression. And that's where this engine comes in. This engine can vary the compression ratio of the engine depending on the input it gets from the driver. I hope so far I sound okay because my, my, my voice is irritating the crap out of me. Anyways, the VC turbo engine utilizes a multi-link system that continuously varies the piston's top dead center and bottom dead center. Allowing free control of the compression ratio, this gives us power and efficiency on demand. This makes it the world's first production engine to achieve both high power and surprising fuel efficiency, two performance characteristics that ordinarily oppose each other. Now how does this work? Well, at cruising speeds, when the intake airflow is low, the engine raises the compression ratio. When you are accelerating and the intake airflow is high, it drops it. Simple. Now with this engine, they manage to incorporate the benefits of both into one package. Now this system allows for huge variances in compression and at low load operation the engine can raise its compression ratio all the way to 14.1 which is really high but then when you want to floor it and hear that turbo spool it can drop the compression all the way down to 8.1 which is an amazing place to be for a turbocharged engine. The idea is that you can have the power of a bigger stronger engine but still have a car that is reasonable on fuel. But here's the question. Does it work in practice as well as in theory? Well, let's figure that out. The Nissan Altima SRVC has this engine. It makes 236 horsepower and reaches 60 in just 5.8 seconds. Not bad. Now for fuel economy, it can do 34 miles per gallon or 14.4 kilometers on a liter on the highway, 
which is not bad, but it's not great either. And here's my question, how does this compare to a competitor with a normal engine? This is the Honda Accord, 2 litre turbo. It's also a sedan and a direct competitor for the Ultima. It has a 2 litre turbo engine. Now, the Honda makes 252 horsepower and reaches 60 in 5.4 seconds, so it's faster and makes more power. Now, the Honda's MPG is 34, so it's got exactly the same fuel economy on the highway as the Ultima with a normal engine. Now, with city driving, the Nissan is a bit better, promising 25 miles per gallon or 10 kilometers on a liter over Honda's 22 MPG or 9.3 kilometers on a liter. But that's not a really big difference. And here's my problem. The VC engine has more failure points and crap that can go wrong. I work on my own cars and all this fancy technology just means that the car is harder to work on and that more shit can go wrong. So at the end of it, the engine is awesome in theory, like it's really bloody cool. But for me, in practice, it falls short. I would have liked to see a much bigger difference in fuel economy. The same type of power, but like a whole lot lighter on fuel. And it's just not enough of a difference to make it worth all the failure points and different crap that can go wrong. But let me know what you think of the VC engine. Do you think I'm completely wrong and that that small difference in fuel economy is totally worth it? Maybe, maybe I am wrong. Let me know down below what you think. Um, and if you've got any suggestions on cool engine technologies, also put that down there. Um, I love reading the comments and if there's like something that really seems cool, I'll go research it and make a video on it. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you did enjoy it, go through my channel because I've got many more videos just like this one that I'm sure you would like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?